Okay. So, and now, I mean, man, has a lot happened, and it has been three months. Um, our last game, by the way, was February 17th. So it's been three months and a week, something like that. Um, I was kind of thinking that this three-month break has actually really been nice. It's given me some time to reevaluate how I do things. I mean, I spent all those months always just thinking about what the next session was going to be like, where this three months, I've really had time to reflect on you know, what's going to happen over the next year? I mean, you realize July 15th, we'll have been playing this game for a year. So I'm kind of thinking of this as kind of season two. Going to be some changes, going to be some different ways we do things, even starting with the characteristics. And then maybe we'll do 10 sessions, and then we'll take like another three-month break, you know? So, yeah, I'm thinking of this as kind of season two, um, and some things are certainly going to change. But that being said, it's... Uh, Time for the big question. Um, somebody else asked the question today. Anybody? Except Tara. <laughs> Are we ready? To get weapons? <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. Are we ready for story time? Yes, yes, I personally am. So, on the morning of day six of Jump, you are in the black void of your usual dreamless sleep in your bunk when a voice wakes you. And the voice says, Bolo meten in Serenapo, tipo haro esta set meten, tipo nago comenros noon. Yeah, I was over the intercom. This this is the third morning in a row he's done this. Poxo does the 7 a.m. wake up call, and then he goes to the galley lounge for the morning meeting. Uh, of course, he then just sits there through the meeting and listens attentively to all of you talk, but he obviously doesn't understand a single word during the meeting that he himself called. But yes, um, the morning wake-up call has just gone out. Um, uh, the uh, morning meeting is in 15 minutes at the galley lounge. Um, and I'll go ahead and let you guys know that according to the jump countdown clock at Nav Helm, um, you'll actually be dropping out of uh, jump space into the Brindle system later this morning. So, six-day jump. It was a little bit shorter this time. So, the wake-up call just went out. You were sleeping dreamlessly in your bunk, and um, it's 7 a.m. Kara sits up in her bed and once again forgot that there's a top on her bed, and she bangs her forehead. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go get breakfast. I'm going for my morning run. Okay. I'll get breakfast. You'll get breakfast? Okay. Yeah, I'll get breakfast too. Okay, so uh, three of you heading for the galley lounge where you expect to, Poxo will show up for the morning meeting. I think he just likes keeping things organized and, you know, he just wants to be a part of this whole sci-fi dream he's living in here. You know, um, he's been having the time of his life during this last week. Where, uh, where's Vril? Um, at the moment, you don't know. He's not in the bunkhouse, and he's not in the galley lounge. But yeah, Poxo's been having the time of his life, hanging out with each one of you in turn, following her around, watching, spending time. There was a, a, a day during the jump week that uh, Bardak used the trans, or that Poxo used the translator to ask Bardak some questions. Poxo hasn't had access to the translator much. Nobody has. Vril has been hogging it, but more on that later. But yeah, he's like, uh, he's really trying to get answers out of you. He asks like, so what is your mission really, Gabo? Well, right now we're going to Brindle to take a shipment. But what are you out here in the cosmos to do, man? Mm, well, our captain died, and some of our mission we're trying to figure out right now. Oh, all right. Trying to figure it out. All right, man. Don't worry. Your, your secret's safe for Poxo, though. <laughs> but, but your people have eliminated disease and poverty and war, right? Uh, from what... Well, each planet is different. And... Uh, I think when we get to this next planet, you'll see more of how the planets 
do differ from each other. Far out, man. That's great that you're bringing this influence to these <laughs> other places. So, to settle it back for me, man. The Raelians and the Zedans, which one are you better friends with? Uh, and, and for that matter, are the Greens ever going to bring back my friend Death Lord? He's got my favorite pants, man, and they took him <laughs> while he was wearing them. <laughs> I'm not sure. But what about the Raelians and the Zedans? Uh, I don't know who you mean. Maybe we have different names for them. Oh, that's right, man. That's right. So. But come on, you can tell me. You guys got like special powers, right? Like you can like read minds. Like like what am I thinking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's not one of my powers. Oh. Alright, well, you know, here it seems like the really insightful one. Maybe I'll go check her now. So yeah. There was this day that Poxo kinda of cornered him and thought he was gonna find out all the secrets of the universe. Does anybody else want to say they've been doing anything with Poxo during this week? Um, I've been showing Poxo big weapons. Okay. Poxo is not really interested in weapons. Now, he definitely looks at it like fascinating technology. But, like, if you, like, asked him if he wanted to hold one, he'd be like, no, no, man, I'm good. I, I, I personally think that all life is precious, man, especially mine. So, um, I'm not into doing anything that could go off and hurt me. What are you trying to say, Veronix? Uh, show them, um, <clears throat> like, shows and stuff. Oh, yeah, now that I'm sure he enjoyed. He is definitely the, the couch potato type, and, <laughs> and they, the, the stuff that's available on, on the ship it does not even compare to the kind of entertainment they have on home. So, he doesn't even own whatever the equivalent of a TV on Kavma is. So that would be really fascinating to him. Now, Viril has not been very friendly or cooperative. He just wants to go back home, but he'll settle for the next stop. Um, one thing that Poxo has revealed is that Viril is absolutely horrified to find out that out in space there's only more human beings. There's no aliens. There's no, you know greater power, no benevolent power behind everything. Um, and he's just kind of been in a bad place. But when I say a bad place, I don't mean the lab. That is what I was about to say. But he's mainly been in the lab and therefore spending a lot of time with Baronix and hogging the translator box. Um, you guys have been in the lab a lot. I mean, you are interested in science and technology, and he is very interested in science and technology. But he, it hasn't been social. He's been, Varela has been trying to kind of soak up everything he can about the technology in this wonder-filled world that he finds himself in. But he's also been teaching Veronix about some of the equipment that was brought back from their bus. More like showing it off. And this includes a very cool portable scanner that we might see later in today's session. Okay, and I'll go ahead and drop it here that coming soon, I didn't manage to get it done in time, but there's going to be a mini game for ongoing research. So that every session, Baronix will have some, um, some results to tell us about research that's been done in the previous days. Now, Again, we don't have that mini game yet, but I figured that there would almost certainly be some things that you guys would want a top-notch scientist to be looking into. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead and jump on any time, guys. What sorts of things would you task your science officer to be researching for you? What's in the brainwater exactly? Okay. okay. And what it does to us. All right. On your notes, on your back. You need to write down um, what they just said, that you're going to want to be researching brainwater and what it does to them. Let him get that jotted down and then we'll move to the next suggestion. How can we remove our earpieces? Oh, okay. I would like to know. Okay, and then... The guy said we aren't human. And that 
we maybe have our, had our minds erased many times if there's some kind of scan we could do to verify that we're human mm. and how many times our minds have been wiped. Okay. So, are you human and how many times have your minds been wiped? I will turn these into mini games where every session you guys are going to be wanting to ask Wesley, so you got any answers for us yet? Okay. <laughs> And that will give Wesley a very important role to play in this game. Then we can have our researcher... I would think that would include, like, EEGs and stuff. You mean the finding out if you're human or not? Human. They could, yeah. I don't know where the aliens were looking for. <laughs> okay. So, um... And how many times we've been oh. wiped? Oh. Our brains are wiped. 